Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen, and today we're going to be reviewing the key terms for 3.7 classical conditioning in AP Psychology. As always, I know I say this every video, but the key terms are super important. You really do need to know them to be able to apply them to your MCQs and your FRQs. So we'll get started on those in a minute. I'll give you definitions and real life examples. Before we get going, I just want to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel. I'm watching the numbers go up and it's really exciting for me. Thank you so much for doing that. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and uh, I'll make my day. Thanks. Okay, let's get going. So we're going to start off by looking at the CED question for 3.7. Now we've done, I've done a separate video completely on the essential knowledge to answer this question. So that's a different video. You have to go see that one um, to get more information. This is just the key terms. So the question was explain how classical conditioning applies to behavior and mental processes. So there's a whole bunch of key terms to go with this particular section of unit three, but we're going to go through each one and then we're going to talk about the definition and an example. Okay, let's start with classical conditioning. It's a good place to start considering that's the name of the section of the unit, right? Okay, a type of learning in which an organism learns to associate two stimuli leading to a learned response. So for example, Pavlov's dog learns to associate the sound of a bell, the conditioned stimulus, with food, unconditioned stimulus, and began to salivate conditioned response when they heard the bell, or when he heard the bell. <laughs> Okay, unconditioned stimulus, a stimulus that naturally triggers a response without any prior learning. For example, food is an unconditioned stimulus because it's, it naturally causes the dog to salivate. Unconditioned response, the natural automatic reaction to an unconditioned stimulus. A dog salivating in response to food is the unconditioned response. Conditioned stimulus. A previously neutral stimulus that after being paired with the unconditioned stimulus triggers a conditioned response. So the sound of a bell becomes a conditioned stimulus after being paired with the food. You can see a lot of these examples are related to Pavlov's experience with the dog that we talked about in the other video. Conditioned response. The learned response to a previously neutral stimulus, now, con now the conditioned stimulus. A dog salivating when it hears the bell is the conditioned response. Acquisition, the process of learning the association between the conditioned stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus. So a dog begins to salivate when hearing the bell after it is repeatedly paired with food. Extinction, the weakening of the conditioned response when the conditioned stimulus is no longer paired with the unconditioned stimulus. If the bell is rung repeatedly without giving food, the dog will eventually stop salivating at the sound of the bell. Spontaneous recovery. The reappearance of a previously extinguished conditioned response after a rest period. After the conditioned response is extinguished, if the bell is rung again after some time, the dog may start salivating again even without the presence of food. Stimulus generalization. This is the tendency to respond to stimuli that are similar to the conditioned stimulus. A dog conditioned to salivate to a bell may also salivate to a similar sound like a chime. Stimulus discrimination. The learned ability to distinguish between the conditioned stimulus and other stimuli that are similar but not associated with the unconditioned stimulus. So for example, a dog learns to salivate only to the bell and not to other similar sounds, for example, like a whistle. Higher order conditioning. This is a process in which a conditioned stimulus is used as an unconditioned stimulus to condition a new, a new neutral stimulus. That's like a tongue twister, honestly. A dog is conditioned to salivate to a bell, then a light is paired with the bell, and eventually the dog salivates to the light alone, even though the light was never paired with the food. Emotional conditioning, the process of learning emotional responses through classical conditioning. In the little Albert experiment, Albert was conditioned to fear a white rat after it was paired with a loud noise. That condition, emotional conditioning. Taste aversion, a type of classical conditioning in which an organism learns to avoid a specific taste after just one association with illness. So after eating a specific food and getting sick, a person may avoid that food in the future, even if the illness was unrelated. Biological preparedness. The idea that organisms are biologically predisposed to form certain associations more easily than others. Humans are more likely to develop a fear of snakes or spiders than flowers, as these associations may have been evolutionarily dangerous for survival. 
one trial learning. Learning that occurs after just one pairing of a stimulus and response, especially in the case of taste aversion. A person, a person eats a specific type of food for the first time and then gets sick. They may avoid that food after just one instance. Habituation, the process of becoming less responsive to a repeated stimulus over time. A person living near a busy street may initially find the traffic noise disturbing, but over time they get used to it and no longer notice it. Okay, let's look through all our cards. Make sure you have all your definitions and you, as we go through them, you can pause and see if you understand them, if you have an example in your mind or if you have the definition. Let's start with classical conditioning. Unconditioned stimulus. Unconditioned response. Conditioned stimulus. Acquisition. Extinction. Spontaneous recovery. Stimulus generalization. Stimulus discrimination. Higher order conditioning. Emotional conditioning. Taste aversion. Biological preparedness. One trial learning. Habituation. Okay, those are the key terms for 3.7 classical conditioning. I hope you found this helpful. Do make sure that you practice these key terms a lot. So you'd have, by the time you get to that exam in May, you know them so well. You can apply them to all your MCQs and your FRQs. If you found this helpful, hit that subscribe button for me. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.